<laughs> really yeah. a loss of words here. Uh, so th there's actually a style of there's actually a style of writing um, called ficto criticism. Uh, Chris Cross would be an example, or Joan Didion, um, where they actually use narrative as a, uh, as a mechanism to provide cultural critique or to to examine um, almost in real time the real time of the narrative. Uh, an element of um, uh, you know, of some kind of cultural criticism. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that I mean I think that that's in large part what I'm doing. I mean it's something that that uh, you know as you know my my wife is a writer and um, and I think that we feed off of each other um, from time to time and. Uh, you know, I think that that's, that would be a good summary of kind of the, her, her writing, um, is that it often uses narrative and poetics, uh, to, uh, create, yeah, kind of like a cultural critique. And, and I think, um, that, that, yeah, certainly is what I, what I'm often doing is like, you know, doing research um and and research different narratives or different mythologies or different histories and really trying to like mine them for uh some kind of like personal resonance um i think with with this newer work especially like maybe not maybe not the ones that are these larger ones on the walls but the ones from the show at ecstasy which are the, like these um yeah do you want to walk us around the space and maybe um yeah yeah I'll try to orient idols and things yeah, so like the oh sorry, that's still my face. Uh, there we go. Um, so like the work from the XTC show would be the ones that are in these black frames. Um, this one's gonna be hard to see because it's quite a shiny surface. Uh, but and these ones, um, which like in thinking about that like the show really like was probably the first time that I've done a show that felt like I was um, really only mining personal narrative, I guess, um, as opposed to mythologies and, and all of that. Um, even though obviously like the show is called On Colonists, so the text was was based in, in uh, the second of the Oedipus cycle plays, the Oedipus at Colonists. Um, but the work itself was, yeah, thinking a lot about like in terms of the void, thinking about like memory as this space that's filled with these voids or filled with even like uh, constructions that are these false constructions and trying to like work through what, what becomes like real or what becomes these, these like sentimental uh, lies that, that we tell to ourselves. And so there's certain things that are like pulled from, from, you know, like this is like a photo uh, from my family when they came over from Cuba in 61 um, in Miami. There's like these little kind of Easter eggs that are, that are in there. This is like the staircase in my childhood home. Um, making a, the thing that I, I find like I hold in common with making, making exhibitions of other people's work or making exhibitions or, or specifically even paintings for myself is that they're both thinking spaces. Like they're, they're, they're spaces that I can go into with a, a kind of like gut interest, mm -hmm. um, but they unfold. Like I want them to unfold for me. I don't want them to like, I don't want to go into them knowing what'll happen. Um, and so I generally start with kind of, yeah, like a framework with, you know, and I know this is just sort of like curating one-on-one, but we're, we're like, um, I see work and it makes sense to me that it goes together. And then I sit around and go like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, like, what's the story there? And then you get to the beach, you know, like I'm using the beach as the example, but, but like, that's probably where I did most of the shows was at the beach. And you get to the beach and it's yet again, like, well, what the fuck? How is this all going to work? And how am I going to like contend with, the fucking Pacific, you know? <laughs> like, how do I have a show that, that operates in that space? And, and like, you know, one of the things that I'm terrible as like a terrible person that's not like a professional painter like should be or something that I do often is like this painting here um, was exhibited like in a completely different 
perform and then came back to my studio and it still was a thinking space. Like there was still plenty to be thought through with it. And so it's changed like three or four times since it came back. Um, and, and that's somewhat how I, how I like to think about these as like unresolved, confusing spaces that are allowed to one month mean something to me. And then the next month they, I, I find out that I'm an idiot and they don't mean what I think. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that that is like a really kind of important uh, facet uh, of your work, but, but maybe also um, interpretation kind of generally, uh, particularly because I mean, we're, we're very much in this cultural moment dealing with storytelling and, um, and storytelling in terms of certainty and mm -hmm. uh, the implications of that. Um, yeah. I think yeah. specifically about um, being in the South and having to contend with um, Southern mythology and the lost cause narrative. Um, but the stories can uh, indicate stories can um, stories can indicate and empower and they they uh, they're a kind of control. So effectively, the person that controls the narrative, um, you know, controls uh, people's consciousness. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when I, I know, I think I sent you a couple of these in the email, um, were a few of these like angel paintings. And yeah, and those like really started from me. I don't know, like I had, I think I had a few students, I'm sure you've had a few students like this too, who were like, who were really religious. And I, you know, I've never had any issue with that. But when they wanted to make work in classes, it always came back to like, I'm gonna like paint a cross <laughs> or like, it was symbols that had sort of like happened in front of them before. And I thought, I had thought a lot about like the ways that one can represent religion or religiosity like even like James Terrell I think is like a great example of you know somebody representing a, a, a like a relationship with God and a relationship with Jesus that is doing it through like really interpreting um, what that representation can look like in in a new way mm -hmm. but I thought about that for painting and I, and I wanted to make these paintings that like that really went like straight to the text and then and then that I allowed myself to kind of like um, play with. You know? So so that instead I was like, you know, I was I was reading the, these biblical descriptions in Ezekiel of of, uh, of angels and and how fucking terrifying they are and covered in eyeballs and on fire and uh, and screaming holy, holy, holy over and over again. I was like, fuck, that is terrifying. <laughs> and and so I don't know I, I I wanted to make these like new Christian paintings or something uh I'm not Christian I just like I just was thinking about that that like yeah the kind of what you're saying like the person who controls the narrative kind of then defines or even describe who controls the visualization of that narrative uh starts to be able to define its power in the world and and you know i love this idea that fucking angels look like demons like that they're scary as fuck looking and that that means that anytime you encounter an angel or a demon you just don't know what it is that you're encountering and so there's a lot of confusion in the world and that that confusion is an empowering thing it should mean that you're more aware more seeking greater enlightenment uh not like fucking you know beautiful blonde curly haired angels and then like uh dick nose demons or something like that seemed crazy to me <laughs> so. well, you, you know i think it's uh an interesting example of that i'm sure you know it's something you alluded to but the, <laughs> the gesture <laughs> the gesture of uh, establishing a gallery beside the pacific ocean um as a kind of Sisyphean uh, gesture of um, acceptance, like I, this <laughs> this uh, human enterprise can only be this good enough. Um, it could it can never be that, um, and to have it like immediately adjacent is like a, a way to define um, 
is to define parameters like physical parameters but also a way to like undefine them um well, yeah yeah just thinking I, about, like, mm -hmm. sorry no no go ahead go ahead I won't no I, I just think it's kind of an interesting extension of, of what you're describing 